Good morning, y'all. It's Sunday morning. It's October 2nd, and it's 60 degrees out here. And to me, that's cold. So I'm wearing a, a, this hat because <laughs> I'm actually, I've got a sweatshirt under this other shirt and a shirt under that because 60 degrees is a little too chilly. Um, I guess my blood needs to thicken a little bit. But um, I've been having so many adventures in the garden this week. Um, there have been really cool things that have been visiting the garden and I can't wait to share them with you. I've got a bunch of hummingbirds. Oh, so many hummingbirds. And um, one of them got trapped in the, oh, you can see one in behind me. Um, let's see this. One of them got trapped in the garage the other day and I had to take the uh, feeder down and stand up on a ladder and I uh, get it to come to it and eventually draw it out of the door because it was confused. It kept flying up and back and forth at the top of the garage. So thank God um, we were able to rescue it. I really prayed to ask God to help me to do it and he did. So um, just come with me on this adventure. Thanks. I've been videoing this week in the bright, bright sunshine. So I thought maybe I would show you the difference between now, you know, when the sun is not up yet and then uh, later. And I'm gonna show you a shot that I um, did of some new things that I've planted. This is, of course, the circle garden. Um, and I've moved some things together to fill in this space so that when I'm looking out of the window, this is what I see. And um, I videoed the same spot in the bright sunshine just the other day. And so I'm gonna play that one next so you can see, you know, kind of what it looks like when it's blown out. And now when it's not blown out, which, you know, the colors just pop a little bit better when the sun's not bright. I pulled some more things over into the circle garden so that it would be more a, a fuller experience from the window. And then yesterday, after I finished potting up the pansies, I decided to put this uh, petunia right here behind it. So maybe the pansies would show up a little bit more because they're kind of dark, a dark hole. Uh, so. I think once that flowers behind it in the light pink, that don't really work out. And I put that buddleia over there. Um, I hope it'll bloom. It's kind of been a disappointment. It's small. I don't know if I've uh, taken care of it the right way, but um, I still need to get a pump for the fountain and then things will be pretty good over here. So this is the view. If I'm sitting on the floor in my guest room um, and, and this is one o'clock on Friday and let me tell you the butterflies and the bees are just loving it out here I've got dragonflies and birds and all kinds of little creatures just buzzing around and enjoying it it's been such a fun activity to just sit there and just watch everything loving the garden as much as they are and uh, I got some new plants that I'm going to pot up and I can't wait to tell y'all about them because I've, I've never had it before. And um, I'm going to show y'all how to pot it up too, or how I like to pot things up. Another cool thing that I noticed while I was inside is this. See this coleus right here? This is that Wicked Witch coleus. And look at that with the new growth of the summer romance. It's like echoing the colors. That's fun and not intentional. This is the new to me plant that I got. I've never seen it before. Beyond Midnight Bluebeard Shrub Arbusto. Um, and at Cornucopia, they only had two of them and I bought both of them. So I'm sorry if you wanted to get some. Hopefully they'll get some more. You should call them. But um, there were butterflies on it there. And I brought it home and I put it outside and it has had bees and butterflies on it like nonstop. You can see this Gulf Frillary is loving it to pieces. And so I'm really excited about it because um, it's lovely and it's uh, a shrub and it says it's gonna grow two and a half feet tall and two and a half feet wide so it's small it's 
not going to take up a lot of space, but uh, isn't it just beautiful? And they say, let's look at it this again, that it flowers in the summer and in the fall. So, um, I'm really thrilled to have it, and I'm going to pot it up now. I watered the pot really well, and then I put it in here to see how deep it was going to be. And then I'm going to put some Osmocote on uh, this. Um, Casey Lawrence taught me about this. I used to mix up my own stuff, but raccoons, and it was organic, but raccoons would come take the plant out and eat my bone meal and everything. So that's what I'm using now. And uh, it's really great because then I don't have to uh, fertilize as much. I mulched these with a, a fine ground pine bark mulch. I don't always do that, but um, I'm, there was so much ground open, open ground. <laughs> I thought, you know what, that'll help it uh, conserve some, some um, moisture. And I put it right here by the window so that I can look out that new bluebird there, bluebeard, I mean, bluebeard. And then I put the other one right here. So I can look straight out and see this one. I also potted up, let's see, potted up um, another zinnia, a pale pink zinnia right here. And I got some purple velvety, um, well, I've got the petunias and then pansies and I've got to water those in. So that's gonna be so fun really liking the purple and the white together. Do y'all ever find it when you've planted something and you didn't even really think about what it was gonna look like when you got it together, but then it turns out so lovely because this is something, it never really occurred to me when I planted this um, goldenrod fireworks. That's this right here, because I thought it was gonna stand up straight. So it's fallen over and it's fallen over onto the plumbago and isn't that so pretty the yellow and the blue together and then the phlox is still blooming right here so i have the phlox right here so i've got this pink and blue and yellow together and i'm just loving this happiness right here it's just really really pretty blue and yellow it's very french I'm gonna show you the back side of this plumbago. Well, I mean, it's on the back side of the circle garden and it is a miracle that this plumbago is even still alive and blooming because um, the armadillo has come in and I don't even know if I can show you from here, but the armadillo keeps coming and digging all around the roots. You can see right there, that's the plumbago. It's, it's like been dug at and dug at and dug at and it's still doing so well um so plumbago definitely loves living here on the gulf coast i was reading a book the other day called the gardener's palette by joe thompson and uh okay well i mean i wasn't actually reading it i was looking at the pictures i have to admit but um it is a gorgeous book and it's super exciting because it made me think about colors and kind of a different way. I mean, I've just been choosing colors that I love, but um, look at the beauty of this. I didn't even really mean to do this. I just liked these colors beside each other, but don't you love the purple of this verbena set against the lime of this Duranta? And then the purple right here of the petunias with it. It's just so happy and beautiful and then i love the blue in the background with the pink right here of the just you know gardening is just whatever you like you know it's yours it's so personal and um i love that you can do whatever you want in your garden you don't have to follow rules but um I'm, I'm enjoying this color pop and it's just fun to find little things little spots that um, just make me happy, just tiny little spots, you know, just like this is just so really doing it for me right now. And uh, when I was over here and I was looking closer at um, these pots over here, 
I realized I was reminded because I think I knew it before but this phlox this is that native phlox and it has a gorgeous gorgeous scent to it it's uh, but you got to put your face down near it so I'm so happy to have been reminded again how yummy it smells and uh, just been enjoying these colors together and then of course I love to mirror things I love symmetry so I put this over here and it's not lying as closely this verbena as to that Duranta but it's just so much fun I hope y'all are having this much fun in your gardens it should be fun 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 and talking about scent in the garden this is that big mama rose and when it first opens it smells so beautiful and sweet and darling and I have this darling tiny little one right here um, this rose has really been struggling because it's been dug around so often um, and I am planning on digging it up and putting it in a pot because I think it will actually do better in a pot and I'll show you why I think that this is that sweet spirit rose that I dug up and I put in this pot and it hardly has any it does have some black spot but look how healthy it is it is so happy in this pot um, so I feel pretty confident that I can dig up that big mama and put it in a pot and it will be just as happy because um, I guess you know being raised up off the ground and I have more of an opportunity to clean out underneath it um, the diseased black spotted leaves but uh, yeah it's doing great and my darling summer romance has this little rose on it and another little bud right here so unexpected um, this one has just grown huge this is one that I am when uh, when I have an opportunity I am going to get more of this one it's my favorite one because I just love the roses the, the way they come out in groups of like I don't know six ten ten buds all at once it's just beautiful but um and it's so huge and happy right here and pretty healthy too this gentle Hermione rose smells so incredible. Its scent is just sweet, so sweet. Um, this blossom is very small, but um, it's, it's, uh, it's still making it, still struggling, but making it. And uh, I love it with the Duranta. The, uh, it just looks so pretty with the colors. And then I've got this uh, blue bird bath. So these colors together just make me so happy. Coworkers didn't know that hummingbirds fought over feeders until I showed them a video of it uh, the other day and uh, I think they just enjoy the fight actually um, because one time I uh, had a feeder for I had three hummingbirds and I had three feeders and it didn't matter that they each had their own feeder they still fought over them there are so many butterflies out here right now there's a monarch. There are tons of Gulf fritillaries. I'm hoping that I can get a shot of um, this uh, swallowtail that I, I see right here. Let me see. Hold on. 
oh, I'm going to have to stomp through the garden to get to it. But um, let's see if it'll come closer to me. Look at this. Look at this one. That is so cool. Um, it's some sort of, ooh, I think it's a sphinx moth. And I've never gotten to see one. Oh, there, there, there. Oh, there. Oh, gosh, it's so hard. It's so hard to get it. Oh, y'all. Ah, uh, it's so fast, but the sphinx moth is just gorgeous. It's got pink on it. If you can look one up so you can see an actual photo of one, because I am not doing a good job of videoing it, but y'all, do you see how big it is? It is huge. It is probably three inches, maybe it's even its wings are four inches in diameter but oh look it's kind of slowing down a bit but is that not the most interesting I didn't know they came out during the day because usually I see them when it's like evening oh y'all y'all that is special have y'all seen one of these I hope that you can oh let's see if I can get closer oh it's so lovely oh. I have to video the velvety flowers of this Mexican bush sage to remind myself why I put up with them all summer long because I love the flowers but it takes forever for them to flower they don't flower until fall I have to video myself petting this exceptionally fat gulf fritillary caterpillar because the kids at work are grossed out by them but I think they're awesome they think they're scary and monstrous looking, but look, see, it's not hurting me at all. In fact, it's running away. Also, what's cool about this leaf is these black things right here are vinca seeds. That's not um, caterpillar frass. Those are vinca seeds. That's the caterpillar frass. So what I love about vinca is they self-seed. And see all of these vinca flowers right here growing? They have been growing here since last year. When they get scraggly in the winter time, I'll cut them back, but um, they just reseed and live and live and just keep color and happiness for you all year round down here on the Gulf Coast. Sweet Gulf Fritillary. Looks a little worn for wear on the Tithonia. Don't you love saying Tithonia also? Tithonia, it's, uh, it makes me talk with a lisp. Look at all these passion fruits hanging from the vine. So lovely. I ate a couple of them yesterday. They are really tasty. And uh, there, there it is. Just It pops as soon as you take it off. You know what? I'm going to show you all again. So yummy. Aren't the flowers on this cac I mean, uh, castor plant gorgeous? I mean, just aren't they just lovely? so cool I'm excited that I have so many of them that means I will have a ton of seeds here's another group of them just really a neat plant so neat neat to grow easy to grow which I love it makes you feel very accomplished <laughs> look at this little buckeye butterfly let's see if I can get him isn't that buckeye beautiful? And buckeyes are some of the butterflies that are their larval host plant is um, that uh, frog fruit that I have over here. I've been watching this buckeye. He loves this gumfrina. I mean, just he's been drinking from every single flower. He's like, this is my favorite flower now of all the flowers. There's all kinds of tiny activity on the frog fruit. I'm really out here in the middle of the day, so I've really been enjoying just watching all the little creatures. And seriously, they are just tearing it up. There is an insane amount of activity on this cut leaf coneflower. I cannot even count how many different kinds of insects are on it. There are just so many. They are loving it. And you know what's crazy? In the sunshine right here, it smells 
like honey. I mean, it smells, I mean, just it just smells so sweet. It's got that sweet, sweet honey scent to it. And maybe I can zoom in on just some of these. These are some little um, skippers. Aren't they just adorable? There are so many darlings out today. Let me turn so you can see this little beauty. I wish he would um, show you the, his, the tops of his wings. I think he would be blue if he would just spread his little wings. I think just the cutest. I've forgotten what he is. There was a time when I knew. It's some kind of hair streak. Isn't it just cute? And it could be blue, like a blue hair streak. Look at the color on it. The darlingness. Maybe I can cause it to fly away so that you can see its wings. Let's, let's scare it. Let's see what happens. Come on, you don't you wanna Apparently this hair streak is not worried about me at all. I was hoping that we could see its wings when I pestered it into flying away. It shan't be pestered. Okay, maybe I can scare it into flying away with my finger. And you can see, oh! Rarely video when the sun is this, is this bright because it kind of tends to blow out the colors and just kind of, uh, well, you can see some of the stuff is just not really showing up very well. But uh, I do enjoy it when all of the butterflies and all the bees are enjoying it. It's so lively. There's just so much activity and so much room for activity. Thank y'all so much for coming with me in uh, my gardening adventures. And uh, I'm about to go back inside and get warm again because it's it is chilly. And um, y'all just pray for Florida because um, that I've been looking at the devastation in in her uh, Hurricane Ian is is so horrible. I just can't even fathom I know what it was like here for uh, Hurricane Sally and uh, just my heart is broken for them so y'all just keep praying for them and uh, y'all have an awesome week and I can't wait to hear what's happening in your garden God bless you